Salutations, second graders. Today we'll start our first chapter in our new read aloud book, The Case of the Dognapped Cat. So if you'll get your book out and open it up to page one, we will start chapter one, The Old Desk. Please follow along as I read aloud. I'm bored, Mark Conley said. He tossed his Atlanta Braves cap on the battered desk and ran his fingers through his dark hair. Slumping into a chair, he propped his feet up on the desk and sighed loudly. School's only been out two weeks, Corey said. He gently rubbed the braces on his teeth. Mark sighed again. Besides, you can't be bored, Corey continued. You've had one adventure or another cooking in your brain since we were in first grade. Not this time, Mark replied. That last one did me in. I should have known a mail order opportunity would be a mail order hoax. If my folks hadn't loaned us $50, Sheriff Hadley said we'd have been in real trouble. Well, they did, and we earned every penny too. Corey picked up a worn broom. But the garage itself is clean, and if the loft is finished today, then the loan will be paid off. That is, if Maria Dolores ever gets here. Where is she, anyway? He took a few swipes at the floor with the broom. She was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. She'll be here, Mark said. He knew that nine-year-old Maria Dolores Consuela O'Donnelly Ruiz could handle her end of adventure or work. If she's late, there's a reason. He turned toward the ladder. Oh, your races, a voice said. Mm, I'm coming. A mass of black curls appeared at the top of the ladder, and Maria Dolores shook her hair out of her face. Rattling the large paper bag, she clenched between her teeth. She opened her mouth and let the bag fall on the loft boards. I said, hold your braces, Corey she said as she reached for the bag. She used both hands to pull herself up the remaining few feet and swung her legs up into the loft. Sitting cross-legged, she gathered up the bag. Ta-da! Maria Dolores opened the bag with a flourish. The sweet scent of yeast rolls filled the air. Sticky buns! Um... Mark sniffed with appreciation. Then he hesitated. Did you make these, Maria Dolores? She frowned at him, but he wasn't sorry. Both he and Corey had been on the receiving end of Maria Dolores' cooking experience, experiments more often than Mark wanted to remember. Uh-uh, she replied, from Aunt Lise. Oh, boy, Corey exclaimed. Then he groaned, fingering the braces that kept him from eating sweets. Mark had no such problems. He quickly wiped the dust off the desk. You can put them here, Maria Dolores, he said. He ignored Corey's woeful look. You can let one melt in your mouth, Corey, Maria said. If you don't chew, maybe it won't stick to your braces. She took down the thermos that hung from her shoulder, and a drink will help. Corey didn't hesitate. He hurried to the desk, trying to hand the broom to Maria. She just looked at him, one eyebrow raised. Corey picked out a roll and sighed, tucking the broom back under his arm. Maria chuckled. Maria had her own ideas about division of labor, he thought. When the bag was empty, Mark went back to, starting, to staring at the ceiling, occasionally licking his fingers. What's with him? Maria Dolores asked Corey. He's bored, Corey shrugged and began to sweep a little too hard. In minutes, the dust had him leaning out of the loft window, coughing. When he could breathe without gasping, he pulled his head back inside the garage loft and glanced around, looking suspicious. I'll bet Samson has been sleeping up here, he said, frowning. Mark knew that Corey's allergies got worse whenever a cat was around, especially Samson. 
but this time, Corey sweeping had both him and Maria Dolores sneezing too. It was just the dust, Mark gasped, fanning himself. Nobody's been up here all year, except us, of course. Maria Dolores stumbled over the trash they had swept up beside the desk. She picked up a dusty sign that stuck out in an angle. What's this? Mark swung around. He took the sign from her, rubbed off the dust, and held it up. Crime Busters was faintly visible against the dark wood. It's the Crime Busters sign, he said. Dad told me he used to have a detective agency up here when he was a kid. I bet he left more stuff up here. He turned back to the desk and opened the center drawer. After scrounging around in the odds and ends, he found a yellowed notebook and a worn stub of a pencil. He flipped open the notebook. Hey, here's the record of his last stakeout. Listen to this. 910, cased Stanford's grocery. Maria Dolores peered over his shoulder. You mean he kept records and everything just like a real private eye? Yeah. Mark's boredom had disappeared. He grinned at Corey, who was leaning on the broom handle. Did he ever arrest anyone? Maria Dolores asked. Her dark eyes shone with interest. Um, Mark replied, lost in thought. Earth to Mark, Earth to Mark, Maria Dolores chanted. Mark ignored her. Hey, just look at these notes. My dad never told me about this. He had real cases. People from all over town hired him to find things. Here's a case about the Abbott pearls. These numbers at the bottom? Dad actually made money. Uh-oh, Maria Dolores said. She looked at Corey, a grin on her face. Here we go again. We can start our own detective agency right here, Mark said, waving a hand. Dad had the perfect place. Privacy for our clients, a desk, chairs. Yeah, like who's going to climb that ladder to hire us? Can't you just see Mrs. Parsons climbing up here? Maria giggled. More like Tommy Ellis with a pocket full of pennies wanting us to find that ragged teddy bear his mother is always trying to lose. Mark frowned at the mental image of the elegant Mrs. Parsons scrambling up the ladder. We'll work something out. He turned to Corey. What do you think? Corey put down the broom. You don't have to meet here. Right, we can go to the clients, Maria Dolores agreed. We can advertise just like my uncle does. How about an introductory special? Then it's settled, Maria Dolores, Mark asked. Count me in, she said. Corey, Mark turned to his friend. Corey hesitated only a second. I'm in, he said, but I don't see where. Never mind, the three crime busters are open for business, Mark said. He picked up the sign and hung it on a nail over the old desk. Bring on the first case. Okay, boys and girls, that's chapter one of the case of the dog-napped cat. So if we take our clues from the title and from what we just read, can you predict what do you think is going to happen in the story? What do you think that their case will be? Go ahead and think about that, and I'll see you here tomorrow for Chapter 2.